I'm Yang Seok Ki from Samsung, uh, especially the, from the San Jose office. We, we have an R&D center at San Jose office. So this work is actually global collaboration across Korea and the uh, US. And today I'm going to introduce the, our experience with the, to you about the key value SSD. The main purpose of this uh, talk is not to show off what we have done. Later, we share our uh, learning from this experience and uh, invite industry to uh, work together and move forward together. That is the main reason. So uh, some data is quite uh, uh, recent and uh, we are still working on to uh, uh, implement feature or to evaluate the, the performance and uh, uh, feature from different angles. So uh, during this presentation, you can interrupt me anytime and uh, ask question. I can share the information as much as I can, as long as it does not break my confidentiality. Okay. So in, in this talk, I most, uh, it's quite short compared to the FMS, so I actually the, the collapsed many slides into small number of slides. So, but I'm gonna go over why we start this work and the, what is the concept of key value SSD and what kind of uh, ecosystem we need to uh, enable this kind of technology and uh, what we are working on from standard perspective. The Bill Martin is sitting over there so that he can explain more, but I will cover uh, the, as far as I know and the, he can fill uh, in the more details about the most recent progress. And uh, I'm gonna share some experiment about this device from the system perspective. So we actually build a real system and plug in this prototype into the system and evaluate from different angles. So let me start with the background briefly. So this is quite the well known. So this a lot of data is generated from different <coughs> devices, like uh, and the uh, application, the mobile devices, and the PC. Uh, users are connected to the internet and cloud and keep generating data. So, for example, on Netflix, the just one year within one year, the, the traffic amount is is one point five x increase. And across different type of application, a lot of data is generated and uh, increased dramatically. So this is quite popular graph as well. So, but I put a little bit different name here. So, around 2000, 2005, the cloud concept was introduced by Amazon. <coughs> the EC2 was first come up, and the virtualization technology. Uh, Oh, okay, so I'll I, I hold on this mic. So that's better, right? Yeah, so around 2005, cloud concept was introduced, and uh, after that, iPhone was introduced in the mobile device, quite popular. Since then, the data is generated a lot from mobile devices, and also in the cloud, the infrastructure itself generates a lot of data. So uh, to me, it's sort of the, uh, the new era started around that time. So I can say before cloud and after 2000 is sort of the, the era of the data. So I would say the uh, era data. So this is a new BC AD for IT technology. So uh, one of the uh, interesting thing is since the cloud was introduced, a lot of unstructured data was generated. So unstructured data is com uh, contrast to the traditional uh, relational database data. Right? So the, the video file, the, the photo file, and the unstructured document, a, a structured document, a semi-structured document like a JSON file, and the VM image, 
the compressed file, a lot of data actually generated these days. So then what, what is the problem here? So the, hand, the data we are handling is already object the, it, in the form of file, but people actually perceive data as an object. But how data is actually stored, we are still relying on the block storage, meaning that even though you store some concept of data, but when data is stored, you have to split into fixed size of chunk and the distribute the chunk across physical devices. But can you store such data directly to the device? That is the, the starting point of our thought. Right? Is it this concept new? Not at all, right? So we heard about the OSD long, more than 10 years ago, and the OSD uh, was proposed to actually solve this kind of the problem, especially to solve the metadata handling problem. But the, due to the complexity of the implementation, OSD actually didn't take off. But the, uh, to store the object into device, there are, I think, two different ways. We can actually rely on the traditional OSD model. Traditional OSD model consists of three components mainly. The, to identify object, you need to specify ID, and you can associate attribute to the uh, object, such as, for example, if you store a photo, you can specify where did I take this photo, or when did I take this photo, with whom. So such data, is not directly related to your photo, but it's associated with the, the photo and specify more information about your data. And the actual data is a user data. So typically, OSD, uh, in OSD concept, an, an object can associate with three the, the components. But there's another way to store that is, OK, uh, why don't you just integrate attribute into identifier? So that is the key, right? So uh, in the key value concept, you can specify uh, identity of object using key and store actual data using value. The key can be simple but much powerful, right? So instead of have, having three different components, you can encode much more information about your data into key. So by uh, just Handling key, the upper layer application uh, can uh, differentiate or identify uh, object from key. So for example, uh, I, I use the uh, photo example, right? So you, you can specify where uh, the, the place you take photo or time you take photo. You can actually encode that information into key instead of uh, store that information as separate metadata. So then why we just choose key value path, not the OST path? Because when I actually survey the data center infrastructure, a lot of systems actually relying on key value abstraction. So this is not comprehensive list of application or domain, but uh, there's some snapshot of the application which uh, rely on key value uh, abstraction. But quite different the application actually using key value abstraction. So the most popular one is the cache, right? So Redis is in-memory object cache which uh, use key value abstraction. It's mostly for the DRAM but also can be extended for uh, uh, storage as well. And the storage side, uh, Ceph is quite popular, and uh, at the bottom of Ceph layer, it actually rely on RocksDB ex uh, abstraction. Even though they introduce Blue Store, essentially it rely on the RocksDB uh, uh, abstraction, which basically provide key value abstraction. The NetApp case, a solid file system. When you see the solid file scale out storage system. Uh, at the bottom layer of the stack, basically key value, to provide more efficient duplication and compression. And the, the, the large scale, the hyperscale data center like Amazon Azure, when you see the Azure storage architecture, basically is a very huge key value store at the bottom. And uh, in the database side, 
the MongoDB is the NoSQL data, one of NoSQL database, and this is, it, it, it provides distributed uh, NoSQL uh, document store. But at the bottom, it, it, an interesting of the MongoDB it has a, a storage layer, and then you can plug in different type of storage into this uh, infrastructure. But at the bottom of this, the MongoDB stack, it basically has a key value abstraction. You can plug in a wire tiger, you can plug in the rocks TV. The different type can be plugged into the, the system. And uh, another interesting is the, the Facebook actually introduced the my rocks. MySQL is basically a relational database, but they want to replace the uh, uh, InnoDB with the rocks TV to reduce the space the user database actually consume. They reduce, uh, I don't remember the exact number, around 50% of user database space by replacing InnoDB with uh, uh, the Rocks DB. And uh, recently, the Cafe 2 basically replaced their storage model from the <coughs> NFS to the, the C, uh, key value like a level DB and the Redis space. And the, a lot of, and the service provider like uh, uh, Airbnb, Rakuten, they build object store, but at the bottom of their stack, they're using key value abstraction. So, okay, so key value quite popular in the uh, data center. Can you help them? So then, what is the problem they have right now? So, all the application basically uh, interact with the storage system through uh, object abstraction. But the bottom of the uh, stack, that hardware, just provide the block interface. So there is a gap between uh, what hardware can provide and uh, what application actually wants. So to uh, bridge the gap, uh, many systems actually using software-based uh, key value store. The most popular one is the RocksDB. RocksDB is a branch of LevelDB. LevelDB was introduced by Google, and the RocksDB is introduced by the Facebook. And uh, uh, another popular one is Wire Tiger. Wire Tiger is acquired by MongoDB, and it, that is the base uh, storage uh, backend for MongoDB. But Wire Tiger also used by Amazon as well, Amazon DynamDB as well. So there are several popular the key value store, and that key value store's main job is to translate the upper layer abs object abstraction to the block, the, the, the abstraction at the bottom. So basic idea of the key value SSD is take the common functionality from software key value store into device. And I will explain why this approach makes sense in the later. You can maybe think, well, what if you just move a certain component into the device? You may have more penalty because uh, computing capability of uh, host is much better than device. Why you, would you want to move certain component into the device? Uh, I will explain why this approach makes sense later. But the, the very simply put, let's uh, get rid of that layer and put it into the device. But I need to be more specific about this statement because it does not mean we get rid of the stack completely, but we can actually reduce the overhead, the existing the key value store, software key value store has. So by doing that, we can uh, improve the overall uh, throughput of the system and also uh, reduce the, uh, the overhead existing key value store has like a write amplification pro problem and read amplification problem over throughput, the low throughput problem. So to realize this concept, we prototype uh, a key value uh, SSD concept using the new Samsung device. So in the last month, 
we introduced into the market a new small form factor uh, SSD. At the bottom, this is traditional the M.2 form factor SSD. And the, the new form factor is called next generation small form factor uh, SSD. It's long, mouthful. <coughs> but there is a reason we use different name. But anyway, so it is same length of the M.2, traditional M.2, but it's a little bit wider than the M.2. So you can actually put the NAND chip in the both side. And then you can put two rows like this. We also have prototype for U.2 form factor as well. And uh, in terms of capacity, it can be 1 to 16 terabyte, but we uh, prototype the key value concept using the 1 terabyte uh, device. So this is sort of the summary of the benefit, but uh, I will cover the one by one in, in the later slide. But basically, uh, initial goal was to uh, provide better performance from the system perspective and provide better capability. And uh, also, uh, depending on the system, you can actually use more disk space from uh, system by leveraging key value SSD uh, compared to the block. Uh, and uh, by the, the point is the main uh, focus of key value SSD is to provide benefit from the system perspective, not the device directly. So if you want to compare block device performance and key value device performance directly, obviously key value SSD may be slower than the block device for now because uh, there are several reasons. We haven't had standard yet, so we cannot automate the operation efficiently. And uh, as you can see, I will explain a little bit more later, but key value SSD Key value SSD is more complex than the block SSD. So it will have more overhead from the device perspective. So it's going to be slower. But from system level perspective, you can get much more benefit by using the, this kind of device. So the, the, the first one is when you build a system, storage system, the key value SSD can provide better scalability than the block device. I will show some data. Uh, about this, what this means. So basically, you can add more devices into the box. Key value SSD basically provides linear scalability in terms of capacity and the performance. So if you add more, a traditional block, you can add more device in, to increase capacity, but performance does not grow when you provide a kind of object interface to the user. I will explain why that happened. And, uh, by doing that, what is the benefit to the user? Actually, uh, key value SSD, you need just one core to saturate the device. But traditional block device, uh, if you want to have an object interface, a key value interface using software uh, key value store, you may need to use multiple cores. So you, Typically, when you use RocksDB to saturate one device, you may need eight or nine cores. Basically, it consumes more CPU power. Because of that, it's very hard to scale the box, to scale the system by adding more devices. Because you will hit the uh, CPU saturation point quickly. doesn't matter how expensive the CPU is. So I will show uh, the result using very expensive CPU. $5,000 per unit, but it, it, it is quickly saturated when you try to do uh, uh, the to implement, when you try to implement keyword interface using the software based solution. So you can actually uh, reduce the number of server by leveraging uh, uh, the key value SSD because uh, it is linearly scaled that you can provide better capacity and the better uh, performance leveraging this. So uh, overall, TCO cost will drop down. Uh, depending on how you calculate it, uh, it 
can be changed, but it, based on our system, it can reduce around 20% or 30% per rack basis. And uh, uh, by nature of key value, it's quite easily the scale out because you can distribute uh, workload across the node by hashing or the hashing the key across multiple nodes, so the, uh, it's quite easy to scale out. So, uh, key value SSD within a box, you can adding more devices, performance and the capacity goes up by adding more server, also easily capacity and the performance goes up. So that is the uh, uh, on-page summary of the main benefit of key value SSD. I will uh, the, provide more details later. Okay, so you have new device. This is good, but you may have concern, right? So there is no ecosystem for that. Then how can you leverage that? So we fully understand that, and it's quite challenging to us <coughs> because we actually overcome this kind of uh, big uh, obstacle to us. So. Uh, our, that's why actually at the beginning of this presentation, this is not to show off something to you. Actually, uh, we want to invite you, you to work together from different aspects. So I will uh, go one by one. So to enable this kind of technology, we believe three pieces go together. So we should show the benefit by providing a product. So we, because of the prototype, the concept, in our real product. But, okay, you build something, but how can you show the benefit to me? You may ask like that. So we explore several applications, whether those applications can pick up this technology quickly. <coughs> then application does not have any infrastructure to pick, it, pick up this technology. So we actually need to build an infrastructure like a device driver, a library, or API, or the command set to extend this kind of device. Right? So the, we uh, should build a core a software, a prototype, to prove this concept is working. And uh, that's not enough, right? When we talk to customer, they say, well, this is good, but you are the only one. Then we don't want to be locked in, right? So to invite more device vendor, we actually open what we have done and basically, okay, this is the core requirement for this kind of device. And we want to make a standard and open to the uh, community and invite others can actually contribute. So we are working on uh, standardization in the MBME and also SMIA. So we started a few months ago and the uh, discussions are ongoing right now. So uh, this should be brought together and uh, if industry see the benefit, then we are open to work with you. And uh, uh, you, depending <coughs> on the, your company situation, you can contribute application side or you can contribute product side or app center side or the infrastructure side. So we are quite open for that. So let me go quickly one by one. So this is a little bit uh, busy, but at the, in the previous slide I talked about, okay, you have a key value store, we can remove this and move into the device. You can simply say that, but is it really good? Then we have to think about whether it's really good or not, and uh, how much you want to move from the software to the hardware. If you want to move entire key value store into device, it's not going to work because it's too heavy. Device does not have that capability. Then how much you want to move? Right? And the, the, what is the, the core the feature you want to move? So when you the, look at the traditional stack, so at the bottom of the stack is you have a devi block device, and uh, you need block device driver. 
usually you are ha you put the operating system and uh, you may have volume manager under this, but let's skip that part. And uh, you <coughs> may put the file system on top of that. And uh, typically, software key value store is running on top of file system. And the application um, is running on top of this key value the interface. This is a typical structure. This, the application can be MongoDB, can be DynamoDB, can be Ceph. And if it's Ceph case, you manage multiple nodes across the cluster. Right? But if you just see one node in a cluster, it mostly look like this. Then what happened here? So let's start from the uh, key value store. Key value store <coughs> typically manage index to identify object within the key value store. And also do the logging to provide transaction. And what happened in the file system? We have a file mapping, so block mapping. To identify a file, you have to maintain all the block location information. Basically, a file system provides two things. One is to provide the namespace, and the other is to manage the storage. Right? So to manage storage, you need to the mapping information, maintain the mapping, mapping information, about your file to the uh, devices. And also, file system do the journal. Okay, so sort of the redundant, and uh, they maintain this information for their own purpose. Then what happened in the SSD? SSD also has a mapping to translate the logical uh, pay, uh, block address to the physical block address to provide a transaction the efficiently, the SSD maintain the 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 log, log information. So as you can see, there are a lot of redundant operation across that, and uh, uh, these actually add more overhead and uh, drop the performance, and also reduce the available uh, user space. Uh, so, but SSD already has this kind of functionality, and we collapse this functionality into that. Basically, we already have that, so this one can be uh, efficiently implemented in the device. While we are doing that, we can provide a different interface that application actually consume. That is the, the main idea. But from the user's perspective, you, we, we, you can think, okay, you remove this the software key value store and the, the device provide this interface directly. But what happened here is actually you collapse the multiple logging and the multiple mapping into the single mapping and the single logging into the device. So uh, we try to minimize the capability into device, but so that capability should be enough to support application need. But we don't want to cover all application because some of them doesn't need to be implemented device, can be implemented up software stack like a library. So the, we can cover more application, but what is the core functionality should be pushed down to the device. That was the, our main, uh, uh, main focus and uh, uh, we mostly uh, implement very basic one and uh, extend that one through the standard discussion. Okay, so the, in the previous slide, briefly the, the explain the basic idea and uh, whether it is actually good idea to move that into the device. And uh, actually, I have many questions. So many people has the, have the information about kinetics. And uh, oh, you are building something on top of block inside the device. That is a common question. But in the previous slide, what I meant was, OK, you can collapse all the, uh, the redundant functionality into device. So device itself actually uh, managed differently. Traditional, the SSD has a mapping table and translate LVA to PVA, but we call that as a 
a flash translation layer. And it maintain mapping and also handling the transaction. But we completely rewrite the FTL. So FTL itself is aware of key value abstraction. So we manage NAND differently. So uh, we use different term index here instead of mapping table because index is similar to the, the post based key value store. So this guy actually handles variable size, key variable size object by itself. So it is not block based mapping anymore. So new FTL is implemented and provide interface uh, of key value directly from the device. And again, I'm using the term device. What they mean, this is device actually. You cannot uh, the work alone. It does not exclude that possibility. In the previous session, we talked about the object storage. And whether this device can have Ethernet interface or not, that's completely also a problem. But we actually prefer to have uh, device interface, not the service interface right now. It can evolve, but the, the reason is that the market is quite different for now. It can be conversed, but we are targeting the main storage, not cold storage. So uh, providing high performance and uh, providing enough capacity for that market segment, we need to provide a device interface for now. So uh, that's why we are based on MVME and uh, the, this device protocol. We, we extend the protocol to support key value. We introduce several new commands uh, into the uh, MVME uh, MVM spec. And uh, through that command, we, so hosts can communicate with this device. So currently, it is not standardized, so we are actually using the vendor command, vendor unique command. So to use this kind of device, we need the very minimum software at the host side. So obviously, this is device. So you need new device driver. So uh, currently, we have three different types of device driver. So for Linux, well, we extended uh, the, the community version of Linux, MVMe Linux device driver and adding a uh, new command into that, and also adding a new feature like a asynchronous I.O. because the host can send command to device through iActor for now. But iActor problem, the iActor has a problem, right? It is synchronous operation. If you do the synchronous operation, your performance is gonna be very bad. So we add it to the, the lib I.O. type uh, infrastructure into the uh, this new device driver, so you can actually do the asynchronous oper operation from the application. And we also have a user space device driver. It's mostly uh, SPDK extension, so the working more well. But there are some uh, limitation due to the, the user level device driver itself. But in terms of functionality, we provide that. And also implemented the Windows device driver. And uh, uh, we plan to open this Windows device driver, actually all, all of them, <coughs> but not open yet. But once the, the, the standard work progress, we may be able to open it. And uh, on top of that, doesn't matter what device driver you're using, what is the feature device should provide eventually? So we call as a uh, abstract device interface, and uh, this basically provide an abstract device functionality from the uh, host perspective. So it does not need to aware of what is actual protocol, the command protocol on the line. It provide uh, mostly functionality and the semantic of using this device. So the basic functionality like a 
provide namespace so how you can actually see uh, the object across multiple devices and the object itself and the basic operation like uh, put, get, delete, and the exist. This is, this is actually part of standardization and it can be extended over discussion. But we try to minimize the number of operations at the beginning. And if we have a consensus, we can extend more and more. So if you have put many, too many things at the, in, up front, then the people are going to reject it, right? So, so we have expected the opposite approach. We put a very minimum set. And uh, do we need to extend that? We can dis decide uh, after discussing through the standard activities. And uh, on top of that, to, <coughs> since we collapse the software stack, that is not always good. We lose something, right? For example, in the file system, it has page cache. Yes. It improves performance a lot, right? So, but if you talk to a device directly, you lose the caching effect. Uh, caching effect uh, completely. And uh, the, the kernel stack has a different type of feature like uh, asynchronous I.O. But as I mentioned in the uh, early discussion, Linux driver through the IOCTOR can be synchronous. So can you overcome that kind of problem? So we actually implement the library to provide better manage management, especially for user level device driver, you have to allocate memory from the huge page. So you, and uh, if you don't use that, then you have to copy and uh, the basically negate the benefit of using user level device driver. So there are several issues actually had we have to address. So well, what is the minimum functionality? At least we can use the, this device without significant penalty. So through this study, actually, we introduced the, the memory manager, and uh, this uh, library can manage multiple devices and provide multiple queues. Also have uh, uh, mostly the right back, uh, right through cache to the maintain the, the status of object consistent. So we implemented the several key uh, feature into this library. So and. Uh, we can provide this kind of the infrastructure, but uh, can application actually can uh, pick up this technology? There are different type of integration points. Right? So one example is, for example, if you want to uh, actually implement RocksDB on top of key value, there's no easy way to do that. Actually, you have to cut out the major portion of RocksDB and uh, uh, plug in into the, the system using RocksDB. But in terms of the performance and efficiency, it's going to be improved significantly. Another model is to uh, using the uh, storage engine. Uh, MongoDB has abstraction for storage engine, so you can plug in different type of storage engine as long as it's uh, compatible to their abstraction. So we did this kind of work with uh, MongoDB, and uh, we did some work uh, for level DB actually to plug in the key value SSD into the system. And another way is to, uh, like a, for example, Seth, they have a abstraction, much higher abstraction like OSD. You can, uh, as long as you provide OSD interface, you can plug in any uh, storage engine into this system. So uh, some system, the, the, the point is that some system have a, already have abstraction for their system, so it is uh, new device can be easily plugged in. Some system does not have that kind of uh, abstraction, so we may have to change a software uh, quite a bit. 
But uh, the good thing is there are uh, many systems actually have the kind of abstraction so we can uh, uh, the plug in our uh, library, uh, the key value access through library into existing system. So uh, I briefly talk about uh, what kind of software we need, right? So the software work, some of them we can, the Samsung can do, but actually many work like a storage engine or the application like cache, cache or storage system, that is not our work. So the, we need to work with uh, industry to uh, enabling this technology. And we show some proof point through our own the development and study. And the, by providing the, num the performance number and the benefit, so we can uh, the work with the, you guys. And the regarding the standard, this is from this slide, is, I'm talking about standard. So uh, we are working on the NVMe and the SNIA right now. And the NVMe case, we actually propose TPAR uh, and the, the work the discussing uh, with the community right now. And the uh, SNIA, we define several API, and uh, I used the term ADI in the previous slide, and uh, define what kind of the operation we need to uh, define. But the one thing I'd like to highlight is it's not about the object drive, and it's different from the object drive, it's about the key value interface, and uh, I discussed about what is the difference between object and the key value in the previous slide. So from the command perspective, actually we introduced four co new command, put, get, delete, exist, and uh, we extend existing command to manage device efficiently. So let me skip this one. So um, basically, this is not closed discussion. So we open for or. Uh, any type of discussion regarding key value SSD. So if you, actually I had a lot of the feedback. Okay, okay can you add this, can you add this? So you can actually uh, join, the uh, participate this activity in the MVME community or the SNIA community. You can actually the, uh, show your interest and the, the, the reflect your need into the uh, standard. So, Regarding the performance, so we uh, did some experiment by building a real system. Uh, I'm going to quickly touch s some data here. So basically, in the previous slide, I, I talk about, okay, what is the benefit of using key value SSD? From system perspective, it provides better scalability. It can scale up and scale up. And uh, compared to the, the existing the key value store, it provides better performance. So the, to show that from the single uh, node perspective, we compare uh, RocksDB because RocksDB is quite popular. You can say, well, is, is RocksDB the right one or not? That's debatable, but uh, this is a very popular one. So we compare the performance of RocksDB on top of block device versus the key value SSD using our software stack. And uh, RocksDB, uh, Again, the popular one from the Facebook, basically it's optimized for uh, supporting right operation efficiently. So, uh, depending on the workload, you can say different thing, but uh, the, we compare the right operation mostly. The reason is that read operation is heavily depending on the caching effect. So if you have a large cache, RocksDB case, you read all the requests from the, the DRAM, right? So it's very hard to compare and uh, justify any number. So well, what is the better way? So we mostly focusing on the right operation, and uh, there are two types, right? You can use the random operation and the sequential operation. For RocksDB case, if you do the sequential operation, basically it's overhead minimum. So, uh, but the real world, sequential operation does not exist in the key value space. Then you, 
most operations random. So uh, we mostly focusing on the random operation here. So this is one. This graph basically you can take as a one data point. It's actually not the the the, the strong claim, but the uh, uh, when you use the RockDB, you have around uh, 13 watt. What that means? In the RockDB system, if you write one byte, the RockDB actually write 13 byte to the disk. So uh, existing the key value store RockDB or Wiretel, their main problem of the system is they have very high write amplification and read amplification. Even though you do not write that much, actually system write a lot. So, so we can get the benefit of by using the uh, key value SSD, but the reducing that kind of the overhead. I also mentioned about uh, uh, reducing the redundant part and uh, uh, the write amplification actually bad to SSD because you write more data than you need to do. Actually, device way are uh, aged very quickly. So in terms of performance, uh, WAP actually eat up your bandwidth. So you device provide a bandwidth, but you can use only a fraction of that bandwidth due to the WAP from the application perspective. So uh, that is the, the actual performance benefit from and the reliability benefit from the, of using the key value SSD. And this is another the graph for scalability. When you add more devices, key value SSD case actually by adding more, you can get more performance. But the Rocks DB case actually tried to saturate the device as much as we can by leveraging the older CPU power. But after some point, CPU is saturated. So this system has uh, 48 cores, but it saturates very quickly after six devices. So to scale more, you have to put more cores into system, but this system costs around uh, 5,000 per CPU, but we only use uh, uh, 18 actually for key value SSD. Key value SSD just use one core, but existing system actually use a lot of cores, so you can easily hit the uh, CPU saturation. So that is the, the main benefit from the scale up perspective. And uh, we also uh, configure system using the MVMO fabric. So MVMO fabric has very low latency, and uh, you can actually easily uh, disaggregate the system. And by uh, configuring multiple system, you can actually uh, get the similar performance benefit in the, to the scale up cases. So since uh, I'm mostly running out of time, so I'm going to stop here. So the main point of the experiment is that a traditional approach to provide a key value interface using host software basically eat up the CPU power a lot. Uh, because of that, it's very hard to make system scalable. The key value case offloaded the uh, core functionality from the uh, host to, to device and the uh, collapse software stack and remove redundant operation. By doing that, it can easily scale up by adding more devices in terms of performance and the capacity. So uh, we show the benefit from uh, scale up, scale out, and also for, from the single uh, storage perspective. So again, uh, I can discuss this more the offline or by email, but basically we uh, did some uh, implementation and experiment, and uh, there is great potential for this technology. So we want to work with you guys in the industry and also uh, uh, move forward together. So thank you very much. I'm happy to take the question. Yeah.